Hello, my name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and welcome to another episode of Inside the Boiler Casing. Now, the boiler we're going to look at today is the one behind me. Well, it will be after I've shown you this. Today, we're going to be looking at the Worcester Green Star 25i ERP. Without any music, because a lot of you complained about when I did the RI boiler, you complained about the music, so we're not going to have any music. I said we're not going to have any music. Thank you. So, without further ado, and without waffling, let's get on with it. Just a word of warning before we start. You must be gas safe registered before you start playing with these things. Always follow the manufacturer's instructions if you are a gas engineer when you're working on appliances. And don't forget to use your safe isolation procedure before you do anything with the electrics. So we've been warned, so let's get on with the video. So this reason why I haven't put the boiler on first is because I want to show you this. This is the Worcester jig. Now this is one of the few things I like about Worcester boilers, is this jig. Because what this jig does is, it allows you to pipe up the uh, jig first before you put the boiler in and the, so the boiler don't get in the way. And one of the good things about this jig as well is, you can pipe up the back. So there's some little spacings here which allow you to take the pipe. So it's three pipes on this side and two on there. So what I want to do is, I want to show you this jig and show you how good it is. Um, they even use this jig on, well this kind of jig, it's, this bottom part's pretty much the same on all the boilers, on the new Life and Style boilers. Not every Worcester boiler you get this jig, but this is a cupboard fit boiler, so this uh, jig comes in handy. So let's have a look at the jig. So let's start at the top of the jig. So this what you can see here is where the boiler actually fits onto. So there is a big slot in the top of the boiler casing where it slides into here. They've even angled it to make it easier for hanging when it's in a cupboard. So that's what that bit is on the top. And you can see if you can't find a fixing on this jig, there's something wrong. Now another thing about this jig with the fixing holes is Worcester say this jig will replace the Junior or the SI boiler uh, by using the same fixing holes. So that's what all those fixing holes are about. And if you can't get a fixing, then there's something wrong. So what's to say this jig is a simple switch with the Junior or the SI. So plenty of holes there for fixing. So now you can see these little tabs. So this is to tell you where to put the pipes. So Worcester actually do a set of pipes for you to use to go inside here if you're too lazy to do your own bending. But on this side you would have the flow, then it would be the hot out and then it would be the gas. And then on the other side, on this one, because there's only two pipes could go on this side, this would be the cold water in and the return. So uh, as long as you've got enough room at the top to get your filter in, because every boiler now needs a filter, then you, it's pretty good. So that's the top part of the jig. Let's go and have a look at the bottom. So this comes pre-made now, guys, so you don't, it doesn't come in bits, so you don't have to make it up. Everything's all done for you. So if we start here at the back, this is where we can actually get our condensate pipe through. So you can pre-do the condensate first. So if your condensate's going out of the wall, then you can put your jig on the wall, mark that, drill your hole, but that's not 32 mil though, is it? So, uh, is it Billy Regs now saying we've got to put 32 mil pipe in? Hmm, anyway. So that's where your condensate goes. If you want to follow the manufacturer's instructions for the condensate. If we look at the fittings now, you can see actually on the jig it tells you which is which. So you can't go wrong. Okay, that one, what you can, the black thing you can see is where the cable goes in. So the other thing was to say is, because this is a simple switch, all those pipe sensors, all the pipe heights and everything should just switch with the Junior or the SI boilers. This is where the blow off goes, so the pressure relief valve, and you can see down at the bottom, so I'll explain that again in a bit. So. Uh, that's the uh, kind of Achilles heel for this boiler. So that's a look at the jigs. Let's get the boiler on the wall 
and let's start talking about the boiler. So as you can see, a nice light boiler to get on the wall. Now before I put the turret on, you can now see the slot and the hook and you can also see where the pipe can go down. So that's the first part of the top, so let's get the turret back on. Now the turret's in place, you can see it's the standard Worcester turret held on by these three screws. This one at the back is always a pain when you're going straight out the back. Again, because of the heat cell, it's pretty much the same heat cell what's in the Junior, just slightly altered, but that's to get into removing the baffles. So if you see my video on the heat only RI boiler, you'll see how I remove that without the tool. So on the turret itself, we've got flue gas analyzer point and we've got air integrity. So again, this turret can be moved wherever you want it and then the screws just fasten up and inside you can see that how the turret is connected so that's the top of the boiler and again because of this easy fit system what was to say is the flue hole will be in the same place as a junior or the SI boiler. So putting the jig in the same place also brings the flue all in the same place. And they've continued that on now with all their other ranges. So when Worcester bring a new range of boiler in, they're an easy swap for their old ranges. Now for you Worcester haters for the cover, because some of Worcesters are a pain to get the cover off, this is one of the easiest Worcesters to take the cover off. Now the new Worcester 2000 boiler, which I've also done a review on, so check that one out. Um, they've pretty much adopted the same idea as the casing for this one. So there is just two screws under here. One on this side. And one on this side. And then the cover lifts off. Hey, a Worcester with an easy removable cover. So, let's have a look at this heat cell. So let's start at the top of this 25i ERP Green Star boiler. So you can see on top of the heat cell, so it's pretty much like the Junior and the RI. So this is your overheat stat. And at the back there, you can see flame rectification in the ignition electrodes at the back there. Um, the actual spark generator is up here on the right hand side. If we just nip around the back of the blending tube, you can see again, it's still got the thermistor for the flow temperature because the flow pipe is still at the back there. So you can just see it there. So next you can see the fan. Fan is connected to the gas valve. And you can see on the gas valve, it's pretty sealed. So no playing with the ratios here, guys. Down at the bottom there, that's our inlet test point for testing the gas inlet pressures on maximum. And the Worcester allow you two and a half millibars from the working pressure at the meter to this inlet pressure here. While we're at the bottom here, this grey U thing you can see here, this is actually where the air comes in for combustion. So these holes are supposed to be here <laughs> and then goes off on the back of the fan. This grey thing on the left hand side here is the expansion vessel, yes, a Worcester with an expansion vessel actually at the front of it so you can get at it and change it easy with a Schrider valve where it's easily got onto. So Worcester are kind of thinking here. Now down at the bottom, if we come down the bottom of the heat cell, there normally is uh, an inspection little cleaning out section there 
but there isn't on this one. Um, but we still do have a flue sensor around the back of there somewhere. So around the back of this grey pipe, which we can we can see the wires go into it. There it is down there. So again, we've still got the flue sensor. So if the flue gets too hot on this boiler, it will knock off. Now if we just move up a little bit, we can now see the good old Worcester fan pressure test point. Because this is the 25i combi, we need pressures greater than minus 4.5 millibars on here when we do the test. And that proves that the cell doesn't need stripping and cleaning. That you'll only find that on a Worcester. So that's pretty much the heat exchanger, combustion chamber. You can see on the top of this 25i ERP. So as usual now, let's have a look down at the water set. Get into the water side, into the water set. It's only one screw here in the corner. So if we just undo this screw. And it now exposes us to the water set. Now let's have a look at this water set. Let's start off with these connections. So this is the gas connection. Now these can be a bit fiddly to get in. And you can see the little raised bit there where the O-rings go. Now what I do with these is put a little bit of gas paste on the O-ring um, to hold it into place in that little groove. Then clip that on and then it should stay in place for you. But I do gas paste on all the O-rings just to keep them in place to make sure they don't flick off when you put them on. Because you have to put the O-rings on the jig before you put the boiler on. Otherwise it's a bit of a pain. But you can see most of them are quite flexible. The only hard one to get on really is this flow pipe one which you need to answer to. Now you can see here we've still got the standard Worcester filling loop. So you take the little brass screws out of there and your filling loop can go into there, your standard filling loop. So that's the same pretty much around all Worcester boilers where you can do an internal loop. The internal filling loop did not come with this boiler. So this is what Worcester call the keyless filling loop. So you just pull down this blue trigger and you'll hear the water start rushing in. You then look at the pressure gauge on the boiler to get to round about one bar and then just let go of the trigger and it stops the water going in. Next if we go up, this is quite handy. This is actually a drain. So this you can isolate the valves underneath and then you can drain the boiler through that. Now if we move to the right and I move these wires out of the way, I love this. <laughs> this here is the diverter valve behind this little green shield with little guttering, because this is guttering, is the diverter. So this is a protective cover which Worcester put in to uh, protect the diverter from the leaking flow turbine at the top here. So this is where your cold water comes in. This is your flow turbine uh, in there, but they all end up dripping and they drip straight onto the motor here and end up blowing the motor. So to combat that, Worcester invented the little green guttering. And guess what? They use it on the 8000 lifestyle. They still use it. So it's, uh, I was shocked when I saw it that they're still using the little green guttering. <laughs> anyway, if we move just to the left a bit. Now, this is one of the first ERP pumps. So if we zoom in there, this is a Grumfoss UPM2. And you can see there's two lots of cables going in to the control box. Now, this boiler originally launched in March, I think, 2015, and then was upgraded later on, about halfway through the year. And then the following year, 2016, they upgraded it again. 
Um, and I think we've had another upgrade since then. And I'm not quite sure how old this boiler is, but it's not that old. I'm sure you Worcester enthusiasts will be able to tell me from the data badge when how old this boiler actually is. Um, anyway, I'll try and find out how old it is, but it's not that old. So that was one of the first ERP pumps. Then to the left we've got this condensate trap, which I'm going to show you how to get that out in a minute. Behind the condensate trap, this you can see here, this little Y junction, that's for the pressure gauge. So the pressure gauge on the front is fed via a little plastic cable from there. So there are two types of pressure gauge, so you've got to make sure you get the right one. And right at the back, the silver thing is the plate to plate heat exchanger. Now, let's get this condensate trap out and uh, we can have a look again a bit more closely at uh, the components on this water set. Now removing the trap, all we've got to do is, first of all, unscrew this screw here, this Phillips screw, until it starts to drop down. You can see it dropping down. You don't have to take it all the way out. Then, get the screwdriver out of the way. We have to move it across Oops, <laughs> so it's in line and then it should slide out for us, which it has done. Now, I would always empty this first and you can empty it just by undoing that clamp on that side there, obviously making sure you've got a bucket underneath to collect all the, the water. So you can see there is still some muck and water in there. So that's removing one-handed the uh, condensate trap, getting it back in is a pain, but there you go, you can't do that one handed. Now the condensate trap's removed, you can see everything a bit more clearly. So this, you can see here, is the hot water NTC. NTC standing for negative temperature coefficient, so that's your thermistor for your hot water. And you can see everything is pretty compact inside here. Now, changing the NTC, not a problem. Even I've changed a couple of uh, pressure relief valves. That's dead easy once you get the condensate out. I've done loads of motors and they're dead easy to do. And to be fair, these aren't that bad. But <laughs> getting the plate to plate heat exchanger out is a pain in the ass. And Worcester actually say to take the full hydroblock assembly out. And it probably would be quicker if you took the whole hydro block out. Now, the plate to plate's only held in with a couple of screws, one on that side and one on that side there, but it's getting it out the back, it's impossible. Another thing which is an absolute pain is the blow off. You can't even see it. So let's find the blow off. There's the blow off up there at the back. Oh, praise the Lord, they've gone and uh, moved it on the 8,000 lifestyle to the front. But you'll see loads of people whinge and moan about replacing that. Absolute nightmare. One of the things you've got to make sure you do as well when you're first installing the boiler is making sure that this pushes up. This, if I can get my hand in, this needs to push up to the relief valve because it's in the down position when you first get it to make sure that when it does blow off, it blows off into the tundish type thing. Well, whatever it is. And then out through that pipe there. So not the easiest thing. Now you would think Worcester would make the side removable. Let's have a look. And no, they didn't. They pot riveted on. So we've got two nice pot rivets there. Now why couldn't they have made this side removable? And then you could have got around the side there and taken the relief valve out. Ooh, do 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 do. Now, it wouldn't be an inside the boiler casing video if we didn't start taking things apart. So the first thing we're gonna do is, we're gonna have a look at this and um, show you the differences between this boiler and the old RI or the old junior. So let's have a look at that. 
So we're going to remove the fan. Um, this is this is one of the changes they've done from the old uh, Junior or the SI. This now fan can come off on its own. It, you don't have to take the burner plate off. Now the reason why they've done this is because every time you take this burner plate off, you have to replace the gasket. So uh, they've made this split now, so the fan, if you want to take the fan off and check the bearing plate on the back, then we can do that. So let's have a look at that first. First thing we need to do is we need to remove this pin and remove the gas supply from here. That's easy enough. We now need to remove the electrical connection on the fan, he says. Not as easy as I thought we were going to be. And there is an earth cable here, which also needs removing, which isn't easy to get up. So, <laughs> that's the, uh, the electrical cable off, the uh, gas connection. So all we've got to do now is undo this screw. So we need a Phillips screwdriver onto here. There's only one screw holding the fan on the blending tube on. And now it should just lift off and come out. So uh, that's the full fan assembly out. Now I've removed the fan assembly, one of the things I have noticed is the back of the fan assembly is different. So I reckon the uh, bearing what was in the back of here is now here. Yeah, well that looks like They've changed the position of the bearing, so it's the first time, first time I've taken one of these off. Um, so yeah, if you know this is the replacement from the bearing in there, let me know in the comments section below, uh, below you Worcester gurus. But that's a lot better if they've put it there instead of on the back of the fan. So I'll have a look at the manual anyway and see what that says. But uh, yeah, that's easy. That's a lot better to check the bearing if it's up there. So that's removing the fan and hopefully <laughs> checking the bearing. <laughs> so uh, let's have a look down at the bottom. Next thing I'm going to remove, because I know you want me to, shall we take out the full hydro block assembly out the bottom? Shall we? Now we're going to be removing this full hydro block assembly. Now the first thing obviously would be to isolate all the pipework underneath the boiler. Because um, we're going to be actually taking this out and we need to put a drain on here and we need to drain. So it's just that twisting, that's the drain there. So that's open. So we just need to drain it from there first to get rid of all the water. Now obviously there's still going to be quite a bit of water left inside here. So always make sure we've electrically isolated it and we've protected the um, PCB. But this does have, looks like a good cover down here to protect it. We've isolated all the water. We've drained the boiler. Okay. Now, next thing we need to do is the siphon would be here, but we've already removed that siphon. So we will be removing the siphon so it exposes this. Now, we need to get rid of all the electrical connections. So, obviously there's an NTC there, which needs to come off. We need to take the pump connection off. Any more connections? We need to remove the electrical connection off the diverter valve. We've also got the flow turbine connector here, which we can undo. So that's undone. Now, until I take it out, I don't quite see how that comes off yet. 
it plugged in. Yeah, there is a plug there. Can't really see how to get it off yet, but we'll see that when I move it out of the way. We need to take out the pressure gauge. So we just need to undo the connection there and take the pressure gauge out, which is easy enough. And we also need to take out the expansion vessel connection. So let's undo that one. And I might have to undo the nut at the top to be able to get that out. I think I do. Yep, that's out. Came out quite easy. Now then, we need to undo all the connections. Obviously these are undone, so we need to undo all the connections at the bottom here. So, except the gas, we don't need to do the gas. There's the cold water connection. Just make sure they're unclipped. That's the return connection. Okay. So, looking good so far. Now, next thing we need to do is, these clips here, we need to squeeze them together, the two clips, and move it anti-clockwise till it comes off. So that's that one off. Let's try and get on this one. So they're off. So now next thing we need to go and release the pressure relief valve connection. So that's down. And then the next thing we need to do is undo the two securing screws, which holds in the hydro block. So it's one here. Mm, might not need to. And then we need to do the one on this side here. That felt looser than that one. Now, this... Uh, should be ready for coming out in one go. So I should now be able to get this out, so there it goes. So it says, let's go that side first. Like so. And it says take this side out on the right hand side. Now see the connection for this pump. Oh, just pulled out. It's out. Wasn't that hard, was it? Now before I put it all back together again, these are the connections here where the flow and return go on to. So I guess you would be needing to change those. When you were doing a thing like this. But all the other O-rings seems to be fine. So that would be my only concern. Would be those O-rings. Anyway. Let's get it back. And as you can see. It's all back together. And it was actually easy. Getting it back in. Than it was getting it out. The only problem I found was. Sliding the pressure relief valve. Back into that little. Well into position basically. But um, I, once I got that lined up, everything just went in dead easy. Everything went back together dead easy. Now it's easy for me to do that, there's no water. So it was completely drained, no water came out of it. So uh, 
that's the only difference so just watch out for that water so that's the end of my video on the look at this Worcester 25i ERP condensing combi boiler so as usual if you've liked this video why don't you give me that thumbs up because it shows me you care or leave a constructive comment down below because it helps with my channel if you've not subscribed to the channel yet then please subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell because I release videos mainly on a Wednesday. All I've got left to say is, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, stay safe guys, cheers. I said, no music. Thank you. Cheers guys, see you soon.